Mysore, once home to one of Pakistan's most famous Sufi poets, is a city on edge. This is the story of the murder, rape or assault of at least eight young girls by, it seems, one man in one small part of this city. All of the victims went missing close to their homes. All of their bodies were dumped just a few hundred metres away. The eldest was just seven years old. These are the last images of six-year-old Zainab alive, being led away by the hand by an unknown man. She had been on her way to a Quran class, but never turned up. Her body was found in this rubbish dump, not far from her home, five days later. My name is Zainab. My father name is Amin. Zainab's mother proudly shows me her daughter's schoolwork. Zainab's parents were in Saudi Arabia on pilgrimage when she went missing. They arrived back in Pakistan to bury her. They believe the police should have done more when Zainab first disappeared. At the Punjab Information Technology Board, they're helping the police hunt down possible suspects. All the data from close to Zainab's house as well as a CCTV footage that captured her in the body. They're using mobile phone tracking data, normally employed to catch terrorists, to try and identify the killer and whether he had accomplices. The crime scene where this girl lived and the CCTV footage that has emerged actually happened to be about a half kilometer and a half away. So there is this issue of transporting the body of the girl back to where it was found. Was it done individually by this person? Uh, it's not easy to carry a body halfway across the town. Uh, was there someone else abetting them? Police have discovered traces of the same DNA in eight similar cases, including Zainab's. The first is an attempted rape in June 2015. Nearly a year later, another girl is attacked but survives. Last year, there was an attack every few months. Five girls were killed, one survived. Asif's daughter was the first to be murdered. Five-year-old Aisha disappeared on his birthday last January. He still has the teddy bear she gave him that morning. He's furious the killer was never caught. Police are now combing the neighborhood collecting DNA samples. They've done over 400 tests already. But the families of many victims believe the police didn't properly investigate the previous murders when they first happened and instead wrongly accused innocent men. One of the most serious allegations we've uncovered is that police carried out the extrajudicial killing of one suspect, perhaps because they thought the court would set him free, perhaps to put an end to the rising public anger. Police say this man, Mudassa, was identified by a witness and killed trying to escape. But we've been told he was taken into custody and deliberately shot. We've been investigating what happened. A month after the first killing, Adil and his five-year-old cousin Iman Fatima were playing outside his home when she was kidnapped. Her body was found later that night in a construction site. <laughs> Dalekar, 
Adil's memory is understandably vague, but the family says he showed police where the kidnapping happened and somehow identified a suspect. The suspect was apparently Madassa, a labourer who had recently moved to the city. Madassa's family believed the police used him to cover up their failure to catch the real killer. It now seems Madassa was not the killer. Police say they found traces of the same DNA on the body of the girl he supposedly murdered as on the other victims, including those attacked after he was killed. I put our findings to the regional government. If that is the case, if, if it has uh, unearthed in such a concrete way in which we have an evidence that the person who was killed, his DNA was not matched, and this DNA is related to the same uh, perpetrator. Which you do? Which it is now. Now we'll have a full-fledged inquiry on that. And those who are responsible for this extrajudicial killing, the vote be spared. Last April, two months after Madassa was killed, another girl, Noor Fatima, was raped and murdered. Another two months later, the same happened to seven-year-old Leba. By the time Leba's body was found last July, a clear pattern had begun to emerge. All of the girls were found in fairly public places, in graveyards, in houses that were under construction, or in rubbish dumps. Their attacker never tried to bury any of them. Anger in the city was growing. Politicians promised to investigate, but the attacks didn't stop. Another young girl was assaulted in November. She's currently in hospital. In Zainab school, her classmates say they'll keep her seat empty. Parents are being warned to always pick and drop their children off. But there's anger in the city that it's taken so many attacks for the authorities to really take action. Why wasn't this level of effort that we're now seeing in the investigation done before? Now, to be honest, I don't have a very plausible justification for that. It should have been from the day one, the manner which we are doing now. So isn't that the government's responsibility? It is. So that's a failing? Uh, if I just keep on counting the police operations which we were committed to, if I just keep on telling you the efforts which we made, it won't justify unless we catch him. The deaths of these young girls is provoking a national debate in Pakistan about child abuse. But the priority, along with reflection, is the need to catch this killer before he strikes again.